Hello, in this video I'm going to explain the Hall Effect and uh, basically what it is and how it works and why it works. Okay, so this was discovered by um, obviously Hall in um, Edwin Hall uh, sometime right before, I don't know, 1880s, 1890s, I don't have an exact date. Um, anyways, essentially what is, uh, the idea is, is if there's a piece of, you know, um, shoot a copper, and we have some magnetic field lines running through it, um, there's electrons on there, and protons and whatnot, they're going to they're always moving a little bit due to you know their atoms and some of them are free and popping around. I'm not going to explain the Bohr model of the electron and all that stuff. So they're all going to move. They're all moving slightly and they're going to end up moving. They're trying to they displace themselves fairly evenly while still moving around. They're all going to move like if there's for example electrons still coming in, which there always is some electrons coming in. Um, they're going to hit this. Uh, this sheet of copper, they're going to have some velocity, and then they're going to move instead of organizing themselves properly. They're going to move to a specific point based on the, because there is a magnetic field running through that copper. This is what basically the Hall effect is. And the Hall effect is um, a way of, that's going to generate an electric field. We know that the displacement of Q's create an electric field and so we're gonna have an electric field running on this piece of copper because there are electrons coming in they're being deflected because of the magnetic field um, in a previous video um, I talked about how QVB um, is the force on an electron and that we know that force from also a previous video is equal to the charge of the electron times the electric field on it. So, basically, what we have now is this. And this is called basically the Hall effect, the electric field created by that. Divide the Qs. So we have oh, this should be a should be a D. The drift velocity. So we have that the drift velocity times the magnetic field is equal to the electric field generated. Which multiplied by the Q will create the magnetic force. Um, this will also create a difference in potential because there's a potential energy being created by this force being applied. If you think about it, Newton, we lift a, we lift a ball. Newton's law says we now did work to that ball, that energy is now being stored. Well, the difference in potential is basically energy for electrons or protons or charged particles. So this is called the Hall potential um, difference, I believe. Um, Hall voltage, in this book that I'm reading right now. Um, so the change in potential is equal to you know, the electric field created times the distance displaced, um, which is essentially equal to V D B. D. The drift velocity multiplied by the distance it's been displaced multiplied by the um, magnetic field. We can screw, this, screw with this a little bit and we get the change in potential I'm going to use H to denote the Hall um, is multiplied is equal to the current multiplied by the magnetic field divided by the charge density times Q times time on the bottom. Or sorry, thickness. T in this case is equal to thickness. And N would be equal to um, the area, essentially. Um, I talked about this in a previous video. VD, uh, I is equal to VD, N, Q, A, drift velocity times the charge density 
times Q times the area of which it's traveling. So essentially we get this right here and we can use a lot of these over here to calculate the drift or the potential difference caused by an electron coming into a sheet of copper or an electron moving through a sheet of copper due to a magnetic field and it creates a difference so it creates an electric field which is the chain of potential I don't know if I explained that too well but if someone has a questions comment I'll try to answer you and um, that's basically it. I hope this just gives you a rough overview of the Hall effect. Thank you.